Do you ever feel too tired for sex? Like it comes around Friday nights, usually the night. Just like, can we just watch some Netflix and get some takeout? I am exhausted. I don't, ugh, can't we just play a backyard game of badminton instead? <laughs> this is so common and I certainly felt like this for years, years. I mean, it just didn't have any appeal to me. There were many other things that I would rather do, which would be much more relaxing and energy giving. So if this is you, if you're like, okay, I love my husband very much. I'm just too tired. I am busy. It's been a long week. Here are three questions to ask yourself to figure out what's going on where, and what can you do moving forward? Because my guess is you also don't want to have a sexless marriage. So you may feel really tired and kind of exhausted and find it kind of annoying to be quite honestly honest. But then at the same time, you may think, well, I kind of, I kind of want to not feel too tired for it. I want to be excited and energized and looking forward to it. I understand the conundrum you're in and there are certainly things you can do about it. So the first question I want you to ask yourself is what about sex feels tiring? Because if it was energy giving, if it was relaxing, if it was nourishing, if it was ah, like a deep sigh of relief, then you wouldn't feel like you had to have energy for it. So what about sex feels tiring for you? Why do you need energy going into it in the first place? And that might be a weird question because you may think, well, don't we all need to have energy? And the question I want you to look at is from three different perspectives. From a physical perspective, do you have expectations on yourself or does your husband have expectations on you? that you will physically exert yourself. I mean, we've all seen the sex scenes that have like the bang, bang, bang headboard on the wall or the chandelier shaking, the sweat pouring down. It doesn't seem like a very relaxing experience. It feels like a vigorous jog. So are there anything on the physical front that you feel like, ugh, that would just be too tired, it would just be too tiring? It's important to do this investigation because otherwise you don't really know what's happening. It's just, ugh, 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 you know? But does it feel tiring on the physical front? Does it feel tiring on the mental front? Do you feel like you have to really work yourself up to get in the mood? Do you feel like you have to figure out what you like? Do you think, do you have to battle with your thoughts and like meditation, you know, meditation is supposed to be relaxing, but then you spend the whole time just like, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. So does it feel tiring on a mental front or, and does it feel tired on emotional front? Maybe for you, vulnerability is really exhausting and tiring. Maybe you just don't want to deal with your husband's emotion and needs. You're dealing with needs all the time. The last thing you need is another needy person in your life, right? So the, the question is, what about sex feels tiring? What do I need energy for on a physical, mental, or emotional front? And this would be a great way, um, opportunity to journal or just talk aloud to yourself as I do when you're out for a walk by the beach, hoping that nobody judges you. The second question you want to ask yourself is, what do I want to say no to? So when you do that investigation, but that all the things that are feeling tired, tiring to you, you're allowed to say no to some of those things. You're allowed to say no to sex that feels physically exhausting. And it's like, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> I don't enjoy that kind of experience either. So you can say no to taking on your husband's feelings or trying to navigate the situation on your own. You could say no to that. You could say no to sex at night if that's tiring. You could say no to uh, being vulnerable. You're allowed to do that. 
what do you want to say no to? You cannot design an experience that's actually going to nourish you and provide you with even more energy if you continue to do the things that are, are exhausting you and tiring you. So what do you want to say no to? And you're allowed to do that. Did you know that? You are. You're allowed. Lastly, what do you need it to feel like to be nourishing? So imagine if you were really tired and you've had a long day or maybe you didn't have such a great sleep and it's the morning. What do you need? And every single time it's going to be different. It reminds me of going for a walk. I like to go for a walk at least four times a week, let's say. Sometimes I put on my running shoes. I don't really run, but I go for, I need like a vigorous walk. And sometimes I want to listen to a podcast or I want to listen to music or I just want silence. And I have a destination in mind and I just want to, I just want to go. I just want to just go for it. I need that. Even though maybe I've had a tiring day, I need that vigorous wake up. Other times when I go for a walk, it is a meander on the beach. It is barely even a walk. I mean, I go from my car down the little path and then I'm on some pebbles and I stare at the ocean. I sit on some driftwood. I say hi to passerbys. This morning I sat by a lovely creek that was going into the ocean and I felt the warm rays of the sun on my back. Other times I go for a walk and it's uh, you know, I am on the beach. I'm not going for something vigorous, but it's a walk. It's a walk. Sometimes I take my shoes off because I like to feel the ground beneath. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you're tired, you don't have to be anything other than what you are in that moment. And, and that's why you got to say no to some things first. You just show up as you are and you enjoy some pleasure and connection without any pressure or pushing to meet some expectations. That doesn't help anyone feel pleasure and desire and connection. It's the last thing. I mean, if you're going to go for a walk and there's all this pressure and you have to go from point A to point B and that's the only way it's going to count and you have to go with somebody and they're going to talk the whole time, but you're an introvert. If you're tired, you're, that's not going to be something you're going to look forward to. That's not something that you're going to go to, to feel nourished and energized, you're going to cancel. <laughs> you're just going to cancel, 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 which is probably what you're doing right now when it comes to sex. Like, oh, I have a headache. Oh, I don't want to. Ugh. So this isn't about forcing yourself to see sex as self-care in the way that it's already laid out in your relationship because there's something off. There's something off about your sex life if you're dreading it and not turning towards it in a nourishing, you know, interested kind of way. So last, uh, just again, before I leave you, the three questions are, what feels tiring about sex, about the kind of sex I'm having right now from a physical, mental, and emotional perspective? Second question is, what do I want to say no to? Or what do I need to say no to? I said no to nighttime sex. It's just never happening. I said no to goals and expectations. I said no to pressuring myself and guilting myself if my body wasn't working properly. I said no to my husband requesting things because that was just too much of a mental load for me. And it's beautiful because then it gives you space to then ask the third question, which is, what do I need this to be like in order for it to feel nourishing, in order for it to be a self-care practice, in order for when I am tired for me to go, oh, good. Oh, all right. I can let my guard down. I don't have to perform. I don't have to be anything that I am not. I can bring anxiety. I can bring depression. I can bring annoyance. I can bring frustration. I can bring all of me into this experience and not have to pretend that I'm some sort of sex goddess because <laughs> I'm just me and you're just you and that's okay. So I hope those tips have helped. If you don't know who I am, I should probably introduce myself in the beginning, but my name is Jana Denson-Howes. 
I am the creator of Wanting It More, which is an eight-week group coaching program that I run three times a year. It is very popular and also very effective at helping you want and enjoy sex more in a way that feels comfortable and nourishing and relaxing and authentic to you. So it's not about fitting yourself into this narrow box of media formula sex that, quite frankly, doesn't work for most women. So uh, I am also, my official title, I, I suppose, is marriage coach. I specialize now in helping women married to men with who've been traditionally diagnosed as low libido, even though I hate that term. If you'd like to learn more, if you're like, hmm, what next, Jana? Take my quiz. It, it's at janadentonhouse.com slash quiz. Ask, answer a few questions and then you get some results, which you can then move forward with. It's called the four desire fixes. So you can figure out which desire fix would be best for you and then a few action steps moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.